pubs. There's thousands of them, but this story is about just four. And what makes them so special? They're old. This guy thinks his pub is oldest. I'm a fair bit older, all right. <laughs> no. no way. I guess we should look into this. In that case, welcome to the search for the oldest pub in the world. Take the floor, Landlord One. Welcome to the old trip to Lucem, the oldest pub in England. So the landlord boards go back to 1760, but we know the caves go back to 1070 when the first castle was built. Up here. Here is the wooden galleon. Don't touch it though. Everyone who's cleaned it has come to a mysterious end. Who knows if we're the oldest pub in the world, but we sure serve the best pint in the world. Landlord two, you're up. Welcome to the old ferry boat, the oldest pub in England, and possibly the world. Isn't that what the last guy said? No, 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 it is. Right. This pub has been dated back to 1050 AD, but legend has it it's 500 years older. So it's pretty old, pretty damn old. We don't have any silly ships here, but we do have a ghost. This pub was built on the grave of a young girl called Juliet. But one thing's for sure, we do serve the best pint. Let's hear it, Landlord 3. Welcome to Old Man and Scythe. It's so old, we don't even know exactly how old it is. The records go back to 1251, but the design of our cellar is before the turn of the century. So you don't know? It's definitely older than the others though. Right. One ghost, we've got way more than that. We've got 53. And one in particular is way better than theirs. In 1651, James Stanley, the seventh Earl of Derby, was executed right here during the English Civil War. Head. <laughs> Oldest pub in the world? We think so. But one thing's for sure, we pull the best pint in the world. Wait, I haven't introduced- I'll stop you there. There are many who claim to be the oldest, but we are fully researched and dated as the oldest. Come on in. You're very welcome to Sean's. The bar itself is actually older than the town itself. Almost all the owners are on record, even back to the original owner, Lewin himself, in 900. And he guided people across the old ford. Just here. Over here in the walls is our letter and cert from the Guinness Book of World Records. <gasps> have we found it? You have found it, and you're very welcome to Sean's. Every bar is going to claim to have the best beer in the world, but we can certainly claim we have the best whiskey in the world. This has got to be the best excuse for a pub crawl ever. <laughs> Cheers. All the machines in this arcade are homemade. There's something magical about all this. As a child, I found that making things that made people laugh was satisfying and seemed more point in doing that than making useful machines. I'm Tim Hunkin and I'm a cartoonist and engineer. I have two arcades, one on the coast and a pier, and this one in central London called Novelty Automation. But in total, I suppose I've made about 50 machines. Not many people have that as their ambition in life, but uh, yeah, it suits me. This is pet or meat. You spin the wheel and you find if the lamb ends up sitting with you on the sofa or being carved for dinner. It was a hobby that uh, got out of control. This is auto frisk. Uh, you stand in front here, uh, the gloves inflate, uh, and then they pat you down. Britain's got a great history of satire, and I suppose I'm not really particularly political myself, but uh, I think it's healthy for little people to poke fun at the rich and powerful. You fly this little drone uh, round this Beverly Hills mansion and see all the stars inside, and you're a paparazzi. You have to try and take the photos to fill up the cover of the magazine. We are all under arrest. I get my ideas from lots of places. It's partly things happening in my life, partly things happening in the news, and partly from old arcade machines and mechanisms. This is test your nerve. You have to put your hand inside the cage with the mad dog for as long as you dare. To do something like this, you have to enjoy the process of making things. I spend most of my life solving conventional engineering problems rather than thinking up the jokes. <laughs> this is the chiropodist. Uh, you have to take off your shoe for this one. You put your foot in the treatment bay down the bottom and it feels really weird. Seeing people enjoying 
using the machines keeps me at it. And also, because they take money, it provides the income to let me keep at it. So to me, it's a pretty perfect system. It sure beats working. Good morning, sir. I've never planned my career or anything about my life. It's just occasionally a sort of opportunity comes up and then I go for it. <laughs>
Located in central London is a public park that remains hidden to even the locals. The medieval-style church of St Dunstan in the east was built in around 1100 and has had a long 900-year-old history. In 1666, it was rebuilt after being damaged in the Great Fire of London. Then, during World War II, a direct hit during the London Blitz destroyed a majority of the structure, leaving behind only the north and south walls and steeple. Instead of rebuilding once again, the City of London decided to turn the remains of St Dunstan in the East into the public garden which is accessible today, if you know where to look. Tucked away from the main road, the garden is situated between the Tower of London and London Bridge. The green ivy-covered walls, trees and flowers offer an enchanting escape from the city and serve as a reminder of London's history.